Mom, you know I can't start my videos unless I have my chocolate milk. Thank you, Mom, for my chocolate milk. All right, we can start this up. 6.2 properties of exponents. Here we go. What we're going to be looking at today is how do we deal with equations that use multiple exponent values because they can get into these huge, huge numbers. Uh, and we're trying to simplify that as much as possible. So we have a couple of little rules. And you can remember them using a little mnemonic device, mad spam. And what each of these letters stands for will tell you some of the exponent laws that you can use. So the M, uh, which you can probably guess, stands for multiply. Then multiplication. So when you see that there are two bases, like this one, example A, uh, three base, uh, two bases that are the same base with differing exponents, but things are being multiplied together, what you can do is add the exponents. So if I come down here and I look at this situation, I have 3 to the second times 3 to the sixth. Same base, that's very important, but they are multiplying together. Multiplication means I add exponents. So this will be 3 raised to the 2 plus 6, which is the same thing as 3 to the 8th. And that's how I could simplify that one. Now let's look at D. D stands for, you guessed it, division. And when I see division, I have two of the same base. Again, very important. It has to be the same base. Has to be the same base. Has to be the same base. Same base, differing exponents, and I'm dividing the two things. Division means I'm going to subtract the exponents. So in this example, I have negative 4 to the second divided by negative 4 to the seventh. So I'm going to subtract. This will be negative 4 raised to the 2 minus 7, which is the same thing as negative 4 to the negative fifth. Easy enough? Hope so. And lastly, when I have P, powers, what am I going to do when I have some number being raised to a power, which is then again being raised to another power? So I have a power raised to another power, and I could even have it raised to another one and another one. But what do I do with them? You got it. Multiply. Multiply. So I have z to the fourth, which is also being raised to the negative third, which is going to be the same thing as z raised to the fourth times negative three, which is the same thing as z raised to the negative twelfth. Very cool. Alrighty, now let's try a couple uh, without uh, without writing those things down. So, let's see, I have same base, different powers, and I'm multiplying. Multiplying, if I come up here, means that I'm going to add the exponents. So my solution here will be 10 raised to the 4 plus negative 6, which is 10 raised to the negative second. That is my solution. When I look at my next one, I have division, right? I have negative 5 raised to the 8th, and I have negative 5 raised to the 4th, and I'm dividing the two things. Division tells me that I'm going to subtract. So that's going to be negative 5 raised to the 8 minus 4, the top minus the bottom, which is the same thing as negative 5 raised to the quattro, 4. And here we go, last one. I have a power raised to a power, which tells me Powers, I multiply by 6 raised to the negative second times the negative fifth, which negative times a negative is 6 raised to the positive tenth. Awesome. So if we can remember mad spam, we should be able uh, to make these simpler exponent law uh, problems easier. Now, there are some other properties um, that are a little bit... Um, well, they're basically the same type of idea. They're just a little bit different. Uh, they're called the power of product property, and they're called the quotient property. So what's different about these two is when I have something like 
3 times 2 that's being raised to the fifth. So the multiplication is down here in the base. So I have 3 times 2, which is all being raised to the fifth power. Well, I'm saying with this power over product rule that that's the same thing as just applying the fifth power to both numbers. Right, so algebraically, that's kind of like saying I have two numbers that are multiplying each other on the inside, and I can just split them up. Let's say they're being raised to a power. I can just split them up and have them raised to each power separately, but multiplying still. Now, the quotient uh, power of a quotient rule is the exact same thing. It's saying I have two numbers that are dividing, but they're being raised to a power together. Well, just like... Um, with properties of, of radicals, when I had the square root of a fraction, I am just going to separate it. I'm going to raise the 3 to the 5th, and I'm also going to raise the 2 to the 5th. Each one gets the, the power individually. So again, algebraically, that's like saying I have two things being raised to some power, and I can just split them up and deal with them separately. The top one raised to the power, and the bottom one raised to a power. Now let's take a look at a couple of those types of problems. Alrighty, I have my first one, what looks like the power of products rule, because I have negative 1.5 times y, which is being squared. So it's two things that are multiplying on the inside, it's being squared. So that means that I need to square both numbers separately. So negative 1.5 squared is going to be 2.25. And then I also need to square the y, y squared. Right, so I took each one separately and I squared it. And in this one, I have the power of quotients. So again, I'm going to deal with each one separately. I'm going to take the a and I'm going to cube that one because we're being raised to the third power. And I'm also going to take the negative 10 and I'm going to cube that. Negative 10 cubed is going to be 10 times 10, which is 100, times 10, which is 1,000. But it was negative. So it's going to be negative 1,000 on the bottom there. Cool, cool, cool. Now let's look at C. C makes things a bit more tricky. Because I have kind of an addition of both of these properties in one problem. right? I have quotient, obviously, because I see a big fraction there. But I also have powers on the top there. So... This um, negative 5 exponent is going to be applied to everything. So let's take a look. It's going to be 2x on the top, which is going to get the negative 5. It's going to be 3 on the bottom, which gets the negative 5. And then I also now have a, a product of powers right here. So I need to apply the negative 5 to both of these. So that's going to be 2 to the negative 5th times x to the negative fifth, still over 3 to the negative fifth. And how do I deal with this? 2 to the negative fifth um, is just going to be, I believe, 32. And then x to the negative fifth we can keep. All over 3 to the negative fifth is going to be 243. Very, very fun. Now, the issue that I'm seeing here is that I have a negative exponent, and I don't really like to see negative exponents. Um, for example, this one, this uh, 2 to the negative 5th, um, should have uh, changed this number, so it's not actually 32. It should be ne uh, 1 over 32. So I'm seeing an issue there as well. So when I have a negative exponent, what I'm going to want to do is just flip it. I have a negative exponent on the top, it's going to move it to the bottom and become positive. I have a uh, negative exponent on the bottom, it's going to move it uh, to the top. And we'll look into that a little bit later, but for now, that's okay. Alright, our next one. Um, actually, you know what? I think I've done a fair amount of them. Why don't we do A, B, and C on your own uh, at home? And that'll just be uh, a, piece of, a piece of homework for you. See if we can we can get through those. A, B, and C. All right, now let's look at example three. 
which expression represents the volume of the cylinder. I have, let's see, a radius of h over 2. Not cool. I have a height of h. And I need to figure out what the expression is for the volume. So I guess first the big thing is, do we know what the volume of a cylinder looks like, the formula for it? If you don't, you maybe need to look it up or look in your book or look in your agenda because they have all those things in there. Volume is supposed to be pi r squared, which should look familiar to you. Pi r squared is the area of a circle times height. So what this formula is telling me is that I'm going to take the area of the circle that's right here on the base, and I'm going to multiply it by the height of the cylinder. And that's going to give me the whole volume. So if my radius is supposed to be h over 2, what does that look like? v equals pi times h over 2 squared times h. So I just plugged in h over 2 for r. Now if I use my new power rules that I just, uh, just learned about, the 2 is going to square the h, and the 2 is also going to square the 2 on the bottom. So what happens when I have pi times h squared over 4 times h? Well, it looks like I have another h squared times h there, which is really h cubed. So which of these looks like pi h cubed over 4? Pi h cubed over 4, what? Found it. Nice, nice. So all I had to do was really plug in the radius into my formula. The formula finding might have been the hard part here, but it is in a bunch of different places, and it shouldn't be too hard to find. But yeah, it does mean that, yeah, you may have to move out of, you know, just what you see here and be able to look for the formula and find the formula. And lastly, example four, a jellyfish emits about blah, blah, blah particles of light, 1.25 times 10 to the eighth, which is a big, big number. Hopefully we all know scientific notation. That means 1.25 times 10 to the eighth means that I have to move this decimal place over. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight times. Add in all these zeros, and that's how big my number is. Boom, comma, boom, comma. 125 million particles of light, or photons, in 6.25, so that's 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth. So it's 10 to the negative fourth means I move the decimal place this way. One, two, three, four. And I put it way over here. So that is a tiny, tiny number. It emits 125 million particles of light in such a tiny amount of time. How many photons does a jellyfish emit each second? Write your answer in scientific notation and in standard form. Now the reason that it gives me these things in scientific notation is because I can use my rules that I just learned in order to solve this. 1.25 times 10 to the eighth particles of light. And that's happening every 6.25 times 10 to the negative fourth seconds. So just like when I'm trying to figure out how much or how many times you can, you know, clap your hands in a second. I'm going to divide one thing into the other one. All right. So even though these numbers seem like they're crazy, I'm still going to be dividing them into each other. So what I have here is basically a setup where I can divide the numbers that I see, 1.25 and 6.25, which I can divide to get 0.2. And then I can worry about this division right here, which I can do because they have the same base with differing exponents, and I know some power rules that will help me out with that. So when I divide these two things, I'm subtracting, right? So I'm going to do 8, so 10 raised to the 8 minus negative 4. 8 minus negative 4, that's basically plus 4. So that's 0.2 times 10 to the 12th. That would be my solution. So just to recap that, when I have things in scientific notation, all I have to do is divide the numbers before and then deal with the exponent rules afterward. Right? So it's kind of like two different problems built into one. I divide the two numbers and then over here um, I'm 
manipulate using the exponent laws. Right? So what this tells me is that I am looking at, uh, let's see, 0.2, and then I have to move my decimal place over 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. So many zeros. So many times. So, write your answer in scientific notation. How many photons does a jellyfish emit each second? So, so many photons of light each second. I, let's see, thousands, millions, is that 200 billion? If I put as many zeros as I should have. All right, that is it for today. I will see you all in class next time. Make sure you write down any questions. I know that there's a lot of rules here to try and learn. It's going to take a little while to, to uh, get, get used to it and get to practice it. Uh, but make sure you do the assigned problems. Uh, also, try these out on your own. Don't just skip over them, A, B, and C. Um, and we will talk in class. See you all later.